Control valves are amazing piece of instrumentation. But when it comes to control valves, engineers are scared because of two things. The first one being is cavitation and the second one is being flashing. And especially engineers want a way that can they predict cavitation and flashing? The answer to that is yes, we can do that with the value of sigma, which is given by an amazing ISA standard called as ISA RP75. ISARP has done something very amazing. It has not just given sigma value to no cavitation, but it does something more deep than that. What it does is basically, if it's a control valve and there's cavitation happening, the sigma value, or which is also called as cavitation index, can help us to identify whether is it harmful cavitation or which is very slight that we can easily handle it. Also, it helps us to know whether the flow is choked flow, whether there's flashing, and what precautionary measures we can take against. Before we get this amazing concept of cavitation index, we must be very clear with what is cavitation and flashing. So imagine this is your valve put in a line. Now with the flow, there is some restriction put, so you're going to have a DP or a differential pressure created to it. So the upstream pressure is P1 and the downstream pressure is P2. Now imagine that this is your vapor pressure curve. So what happens when the fluid is going to be at this particular uh, region? the fluid is going to change from liquid state to vapor state and this stage is called as the point where the liquid changes to vapor phase now at the exact opposite side if you notice the va the vapor is going to turn back into liquid state here what is going to happen is the the bubbles are going to burst to come back to liquid state which is called as popping which has very high velocities that can damage the valve and the piping downstream. This entire phenomenon is called as cavitation. Now we look into the next case, which is when there is flow to the valve, but what happens is the pressure downstream does not recover. This happens when the pressure downstream is still below the vapor pressure curve. This phenomenon here makes the liquid to still stay in the vapor pressure phase in the downstream and this phenomenon is called as flashing. These two phenomena are very important before we start learning about cavitation index. Now let's get to this term. So cavitation index, which is also called as sigma, is defined by ISA as follows. It is P1, pressure upstream, which we just learned, you know, the pressure upstream of the valve, minus PV, which is the pressure or the vapor pressure curve, which we just saw. And this upon, we'll have is the pressure upstream minus the pressure downstream, which we just learned the downstream of the valve. This is sigma value. But there is something more interesting to it. There's an interesting observation with respect to sigma value. So let's look into that now. The numerator and the denominator of sigma value are actually fighting with each other. Yes, that is true. And they're fighting for what? They're fighting for cavitation. Basically, the higher the value of sigma, that is if the numerator wins, then there's lesser chances of cavitation. And if the value of sigma is less, then there is very high chances of cavitation and that would lead to lower values of sigma. Now you would have the same question that I had that is it a value that we can quantify? So ISA has done something amazing here. It has identified five levels that can help us to understand this in a very logical pattern. And all the steps actually follow each other. So it is very easy to learn. We look into now the first one, which is incipient cavitation. The word incipient itself means start of something. So here, as soon as this is the very basic or very start of it of cavitation, but as we say, because it's just incipient stage, the pressure drop is very low for such cases and the valve says that I can handle it. We don't need to have any special precautions for such a case. Now, what if we have the second level, which is called as IC with the suffix C, which stands for constant cavitation. Now here, this is where we're getting to some interesting conclusions. Here, there is vibration happening in the valve. There is cavitation happening in the valve but the vibration is low that is it is not that harmful or that it can damage the valve we'll also see a practical example from emerson fisher of flow serve valve after at the end of the video as to how can we implement this in actual physical projects now let's look into the third one which is 
cavitation index when it starts for damage. But before that, if you're liking these videos, I produce a new video every Saturday and I would love to share that I would try my best to include the topics which can help you the most. So if you are liking these videos, please consider subscribing and especially press the bell icon. So every Saturday you can learn a new thing. Now let's look into the third term, which is ID. Here is where you need to get more serious and you have to take more precaution because ID stands for incipient damage. So this incipient word means start. So this is start of the damage to the valve. Here your valve can get damaged. The vibrations are present and the noise is present and the level is high. So for such cases, there is chances of pitting and you have to use some special precautions like hardening the trim material of the valve. Otherwise your valve might not be able to sustain and would get damaged. Now we'll have is the fourth criteria which is sigma ch with the suffix ch which is choking cavitation and the final one which is being is maximum vibration cavitation. These both are very similar to each other and very simple but very very essential. What happens here is imagine that this is your valve and this is your pressure drop happening. We are very sure with the concept that if we increase dp there is going to be an increase in flow but we keep increasing dp at a point of time flow will not increase. This point is called as choked flow. So in choked flow condition, what happens is the cavitation which happens is very harmful and the velocities which are generated can damage the valve in a very great manner. So for such a case, if you're having a valve and if you keep it for a very long duration of time, this the valve will not be able to sustain. So if your valve or your sigma or cavitation index value falls in this range, you can use it for infrequent operations like when you go for a relief valve case, you can use it or you can use it for control valve during startup operations or during shutdown operations, but cannot be used for long duration of applications. Now, we look into an actual example from FlowServe globe valve. This would make things actually interesting and understand the real world phenomenon. So for this globe valve, what the vendor has given in their catalogs is that the sigma value of it's greater than two, there is no cavitation happening. Ah, That's very simple for us, easy, no issue. If your cavitation index is between 1.7 to 2, there is no special cavitation control that the vendor recommends. This is like our incipient cavitation IC suffix where you don't have to pick, take any very special precautions. But now when the value is between 1.7 to 1.5, some cavitation control would be required like having a hardened trim material could be sufficient for such a case. Now when you're getting to the range between 1 to 1.5, you might require a multi-stage trim. This is something serious. There are chances of very severe cavitation happening here. And finally, if it goes below 1, then flashing is occurring. I hope you're finding these videos valuable and interesting. If yes, please press the like button and please subscribe. Also, I've written a free ebook on engineering standards. and there have been almost 2000 plus downloads up till now. Also, the standards are divided into such an easy pattern that anybody who is even a beginner can understand it. The link is given in the description below to understand these standards. If you have any questions, any doubts, please leave it in the comment section or you can contact me via LinkedIn. I would love to have a technical discussion with you and please let me know if there is any queries. I would be very glad to answer it. Thank you, keep learning and have a great day ahead.